Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to our evening Dhamma session. Anto jata bahi jata jataya jatita pacha tang tang ko tama pucha mi ko imang vichataye jatang It's one of the more memorable verses from the Pali. It means the inner tangle and the outer tangle. this generation, the world, it's entangled with a tangle. And to this we ask Gotama, who will be able to untangle the tangle? What I'm thinking of tonight is the inner tangle and the outer tangle and how we don't realize how connected they are it's common to think of meditation as a hedonistic or escapist activity We don't make the connection between the inner world and the outer world. Because we don't make the connection with the inner world and the outer world, we don't realize that how we treat ourselves is very similar to how we treat others. How we treat others affects our own peace of mind. We're not conscious of how we're treating ourselves. We're not conscious of how we treat others. We get entangled. We get entangled because we don't see clearly the tangle. We don't even look at it in those terms. We don't see ourselves getting caught up in anything. We fight. We manipulate others, we harm others, we compete with others. You see this in the outer tangle. We get caught up in competition. We see this nowadays, everyone thinks they're right. There's so much conflict in the world. Quite interesting to see how people, I find myself caught in the middle of groups, seemingly like-minded people on opposite sides of the debate, or like-minded or not like-minded people. They are people, whether they're like-minded or not. We have people on both sides of the debate, and it's so easy to pick teams, right? Everyone thinks they're right. The problem is that somebody has to be wrong. When you have two groups with opposing views, one of them has to be wrong. Often it's both. Probably more likely it's both. But it's not, it's never equal like that. And because it's not equal, you, you find something in your, in one side that you're sure is right. And it's important to be right. It's not to say that picking a side isn't a good thing. And two sides to everything doesn't mean that both sides are equal. It's a, a very important fallacy. That's not the tangle. You don't become entangled just because you have views and, and opinions and beliefs. Just because you think you're right 
problem is when you try to make other people think that you're right. It's always important to be right. It's not always wise to try and impress that upon others. It's quite a difference. This is the tangle. The Buddha was right. The Buddha said, I don't fight with the world, the world fights with me. And he didn't. He didn't. He didn't do what we often do, is get caught up and embroiled in the issues and find ourselves hating others, find ourselves angry, find ourselves in conflict with others. And how could that be right? How could it be right? How could it be good to be angry? How could it be good to hate someone, no matter how evil they are? How could conflict possibly be good? You don't see that if you're not in tune with the inner world. And so what we come to see from meditation is that it helps not only untangle the inner tangle, but the outer tangle as well. As inside, so outside. We start to realize that understanding our own minds is the first step to reconciliation. That if we can come to be at peace with ourselves, we can wrestle with our own emotions and free ourselves from the causes of suffering. We're able to relate to others free from causing suffering. Without causing suffering in others. So when we talk about karma, the cycle of karma is in three parts. There is the samsara vatta. Vatta is the wheel. There's three parts. There's kilesa, which is the defilement. Then there's kamma, which are the actions. And then there's vipaka, which is the results. And based on the results of karma, the results of the past, we get upset again, and then we have more kilesa. So it's a cycle. It's a vicious cycle. It's how um, the cycle of vengeance works. It's how wars are, are fought. It's how, it's how uh, mental disease, mental illness, takes root. And so our defilements inside help us understand our relationships with others in a new way. When we look inside and see how awful anger is, we, don't, we no longer want to be angry. We see how awful greed is. We start to see how our manipulations of others are not for their benefit, they're not rational, they're not deserved. I deserve this, I deserve that. They're just greedy. I see how our ego, when we see how attached we are to things, how controlling we are, even just of the breath, you know. When you watch your stomach rising and falling, and instead of watching it, you find yourself controlling it, forcing it and you bang your head against that wall long enough and you start to let go. And miraculously, you're no longer a control freak. You stop trying to control others. You stop, stop trying to be in charge, be the boss. You stop being overbearing and belligerent. You stop trying to force other people to get, to see your side, to agree with you, right? What ridiculous things we do. 
You see people fighting passionately for good causes. They're right, right? So many people are right about what's going on in, in America right now. There's a lot of bad things going on. I mean, there's, there's no question about that in my mind. But they get angry about it. And then you wonder how that could possibly help. it informs our karma. We see how we hurt ourselves, we see when we meditate we watch our actions, we see how even just simple acts like walking, eating, can be violent, you know. You're eating, you, eating can be incredibly violent. If you don't understand that, you, you've never been mindful and watched how we stuff ourselves, how we force food on ourselves out of craving, out of desire. How by being stressed and unmindful we create a very unpleasant situation for simple things like eating, simple things like daily tasks, how we wash dishes if we do it violently and then we break dishes or we cut ourselves or we we even tense our muscles, why we throw our back out, why we get a strained neck and so on, why we have back aches, why we have headaches, violence, all because of our defilement. And so we learn how to act in ways that are less violent. And it's a microcosm to the general reality of society and the world so that when we interact with others we're not inclined to be angry to be violent we've, we've worked out our issues inside but we've also come to, to learn how to behave how to do and say how to speak and act in ways that is that are beneficial that are helpful that are conducive to peace and happiness. Why? Because we've, we've learned, we've studied. And so the results are happiness. Even just the results inside, when you cling, when you hate, even if you just hate yourself, the results are unpleasant. And they're not unpleasant just inside, right? If you hate yourself, you're much more likely to hate others. We can have this cognitive dissonance where we hate ourselves and yet we try to be very nice to others, but it doesn't last. These sorts of people, they can seem very self-deprecating, self-deprecatory. Uh, and yet, and yet, trying their best to be kind to others, but eventually it comes through. You can't have so much hate inside for yourself. If you want to truly love others, you really have to love yourself. It's because of the attitude, right? You can't have this cognitive dissonance. You can't have this dual duality inside. You can't be two, two types of people. You can pretend, you know, you can have a Dr. And Jekyll, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde sort of personality for a while, but it's not sustainable. And so it spills over. We tend to, without realizing it, be cruel to others. Or if we're greedy, we tend to try to manipulate others. If we're deluded inside, we tend to be arrogant and conceited towards others. And so the results are unpleasant. The unpleasantness in our relationships, our inabilities to make peace with our families, with our friends. It's amazing how much it changes when you look inside and when you learn about yourself. Not because we're just to blame. It's not to say that the world isn't a terrible place and that there aren't important things you can do to help change it. 
But that's what's so baffling, is that we don't seem to be doing things to change it, we just like to react. It's not baffling, it's just un un unfortunate. There's a clear cause, but it's quite, quite amazing to watch and to think, to see how we become so caught up thinking that we're doing the right thing when we are cruel to others, when we're angry at others, when we hate others. And we shout and we fight and we post online about others. So when you learn to see through that, it's not to say that you don't act, you don't work to change the world. More becomes na more comes naturally that you do change the world, that you change it in a way that brings peace and happiness. Why? Because you know it brings peace and happiness. You've studied it. The inner tangle and the outer tangle. They are related. Meditation is the study of the inner tangle, and to see how tangle how tangles work. Sile patitaya naro sapanyo chitang panyancha bhavayang atapi nipako bhikkhu so imang vichataye chitang. Standing on morality, ethics, the wise one cultivates concentration and wisdom. This bhikkhu, this one who sees the danger in the cycle of samsara, they will be able to untangle the tangle. The Buddha in his answer didn't make a distinction between the two. He didn't say the outer tangle should be tackled in this way and the inner tangle should be tangled in that way. They are one and the same. They're the same tangle. So meditation is not something that affects only your inner life. It changes everything about your life. It helps you untangle. It helps you become untangled. To be straight, to be clear, to be upright, to be pure, to be free from entanglement. So, a little food for thought. A little food for thought with the idea that this somehow relates to the uh, the issues of today that are not anything new. There have always been the issues of today and how we deal with them to help us look to the Buddha's teaching to find some guidance and how to deal with issues to deal with the world, even just to deal with our families, with our friends, with our relationships, and to learn to see them in the right way, to see the tangle, to see how entangled we get. It's not it's important to be right, it's not important to try to make everyone see the way you do. It's not important to win. This is the point, is that we're always trying to win and trying to conquer. What we should be doing is trying to untangle, to be free. So there you go. There's the Dhamma for tonight. Thank you all for coming out. Have a good night.